Well, this is Todd Coconato, banned in the USA. I never thought I'd say this about a tent crusade, especially a friend of mine. But sure enough, we are going to deal with this tonight as Mario Murillo Ministries has had something unbelievable happen in the Phoenix area. But don't worry, God is still moving and we're going to see this through. But I want to invite Mario Murillo to the program. Uh, Mario, so I never thought we'd be talking about this on the program, at least not now. But here we are. Your tent crusade coming to the Phoenix area has uh, hit a little bit of a bump. Why don't you explain what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what, it's more like a Titanic. We hit an iceberg. And uh, the, the issue here is that Salt River Fields came into a legal contract with us and with Revival Arizona, uh, another wonderful organization. And uh, we could tell that once it became clear that this was a Christian conservative outreach, things began to get squirrely. And for weeks we were fine. Listen, we made every payment on time. We always do. We have an absolute, Todd, we have a spotless record That's right. in our credit rating for paying every, we've never left a debt in a city. Yeah. So we were shocked when we got word from Salt River Fields Management, they said they told a story and that's exactly what it is. They said that uh, in a parking lot in a retail area nearby the Salt River Fields, a group of people were putting our crusade cards on people's windshield and then yelling at them to repent. Now, let me tell you something. We have strict rules against that. You cannot be a volunteer, you cannot be on our team and do any of those things. That's why we knew it wasn't our people. And to be honest with you, it didn't pass the smell test, Todd. Right, there was right. something about it that was squirrely. So yeah. now, you know, we live in the United States. When you have a contract legally binding, they took tens of thousands of dollars from us right. for the, the rental on this facility. So explain that and to then, the folks. They've already, they've already taken thousands of dollars from you guys. Exactly. We kept up with every single installment payment. We always do. And so here we are a month away after spending three months working on this crusade. And they said, this is what happened. Now, therefore, we want you to amend. And I believe it's one individual, by the way. Yeah. We want you to amend the legally binding contract to include a stipulation that if ever this happens again, you would agree to having your contract terminated. Well, that's crazy. I'm not going to agree to that. Right. I mean, a, the day reason, before, a day before the event, you know, all of a sudden, you know, canceled. Right. Right. It could happen. And we have no control. When you hand out 40,000 invitations to a soul winning crusade, you don't know who's got them. And, and I, I don't know that somebody didn't know and could conveniently find out that all they had to do is put a card on a windshield to get us knocked out of the uh, event site. Well, so I didn't sign it. And in response, they immediately terminated our contract. Imagine that. They just, that's it. And, and they won't uh, respond to us. They won't talk to us. Uh, so we, we've had to go elsewhere and... The good news is, because I don't want anyone watching to be confused, we are going to have a crusade. Our tent is going to be up from the 21st to the 24th as scheduled. We have two sites that we've already secured. We're trying to decide which one. And as the time that we this show began, we didn't know yet. But believe me, the brunch is still on. The uh, prayer time with all the workers on the Saturday before is on. The outreach is still on, and none of our workers have left town. But I want to tell you, and I got to say that this is not an attack on Mario Murillo Ministries. Every church in the Phoenix area needs to wake up and understand this. This was done, in my opinion, because of our faith. This was done because of our political conservative views. That's this right. is... The old ugly word we don't want to use, it's cancel culture. And it's exactly what happened. And, and we, there's nothing we can do about it at this point. There's nothing. You see, the contract 
is not in the name of Mario Murillo Ministries. It's in the name of Revival Arizona, a wonderful organization. And we don't want to put them in harm's way. I don't want them embroiled in any legal activity because they are innocent. They have done us a favor. But believe me, if I had known and, and we, we had a, a staff member make a terrible mistake getting us into this contract, but I'm going to tell you, if I had known that this was going to happen, there's no way I would have signed. And we will never again do it this way. But yeah. I will not embroil Revival Arizona in a legal situation. But I'm ready. And if anyone out there knows a way around that, I'll gladly go for it. Because I do believe the devil needs to pay sevenfold for what he stole from us. Yeah. Well, one thing I know about you, you're not going to go out this one without a fight here. And so we're, we're going to no. move forward. This, this tech crusade is going to happen. It's going to be powerful. Uh, but, you know, let me just think about this here. You know, somebody in there, uh, there could just be one person, one person at this organization that is a safe spaces person. You know, that's what, worried about, oh, my goodness, they might come into Phoenix and preach the gospel and they might even mention Trump's name. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's amazing how this is now happening in America, Mario. And I, why do we do a show about this? Here's here's the deal. OK. And by the way, you, you're going to be preaching the gospel, getting people saved, set free, healed and delivered. You don't even really get into too much political stuff. Anyway, it might be something that comes up, but it's a spiritual thing. It's not even a political thing. But l let's just talk about this. OK, Donald Trump in New York, he paid those banks. They, there was not one bank that didn't That's get the right. money. You know, everybody That's got right. the money. And so no bank was complaining, but it was the cancel culture of the state and the AG of the state and the city of New York that went after him. And now he's in this horrible multi millions of dollars. So it's lawfare. And I want folks to understand why do we do a show on this? Because we want, we want to educate you to, to arm you, not to alarm you, but to arm you about what's going on when you're now a, an evangelist who wants to go to a city and, you know, you might have a, a view that that somebody doesn't like on any any employee of an organization where you're wanting to rent a space. You're paying them the money. You're paying them on time. Uh, you know, you're, you're just like any other person that rents that space. You know, they can have a Star Trek convention there. No one cares. You know, they could have a flat earth, earth convention. No one cares. Somebody comes in to preach the gospel and all of a sudden it's canceled. And so this is why we're talking about this, Mario. Uh, you've been in ministry for 50 years. Have you ever seen anything like this in the ministry? No, it's never happened to us before. You know, I mean, even in the 70s, in uh, communist Berkeley, we never went through anything like this. They tried That's to resist point. us using facilities on the university campus, but we were never banned because of our faith. This is the first time. And I, I want to comment on something. You are absolutely right, Todd. I do not get political in the pulpit. I get moral. Right. And, and here's the deal. For me, the reason I preach against abortion, I preach against same-sex marriage, I preach against criminal activity and drug abuse, those are all moral issues. We are yeah. not the ones that claimed ownership of them and made them into political policy. The left right. did that. So what are we supposed to do? If they redefine what's right and wrong, are we supposed to then adjust our view of what's right and wrong? Absolutely not, Todd. And I know yeah. you agree with this because you've been preaching this way likewise. Yeah, and, and anybody who's preaching this way understands because like we've been saying for many years, Mario, and you issued a few warnings a couple of years ago. I want to talk about that in a minute, but we, we, we've talked about this coming and now it's here. And here's, here's what I want to make the point because you just made this and I want to, I want to bang this in, in so everybody understands. What this is, is it's never been about politics, okay? That, that they yeah. try to make it like it's a right-left issue and we're hate mongers and, you know, using all this type of engineering, this these type of weaponized terms. But it's never been. It's always been a spiritual battle. It's always been a battle of, of light versus darkness. And now what's happened is this is now in our face. It is overt to where many more people are starting to see this. And I think that's why they're scared to death about what's going to happen in 24 is because they know that many, many folks have awakened to understand what's going on here. But, you know, the, the question is, how's this all going to play out? So now we're dealing with cancel culture for, for even, you know, for an evangelist to go to a, a fairground or, you know, an, an area that is a venue that's for rent. That's what venues are for. They're for rent. And you come in and you and you you secure them and you pay them. You sign a contract. 
this, I mean, the only time when this would be permissible, like in 1980s or 90s, was if this was like somebody did something violent or, you know, really crazy right. thing, Mario. Uh, otherwise, this would have never been an issue then. So we're, we're in different times. This is drastic times. And folks need to understand where we're at. Yeah. And, and the fact is, let's, let's, let's look at something else that we also need to understand. The church needs to push back on evil. How many times have we said that on this show, week right. after week after week? In the, the month of December, early December, I wrote a letter to all of our partners worldwide. And in that letter, I said, in 2024, imagine this, I wrote this. In 2024, venues are going to be blocked from being used by Christian organizations in America but I had no idea that I was gonna be involved in my own prediction. And there it is. Now, here's what we do. We have a choice. The churches of Phoenix have a choice. The Christian business community of Phoenix has a choice. Do we lay down and let this happen? Because it's a test. This is the, the next step. First, we had a lockdown on uh, using COVID as a pretext for silencing the church. Why? Because the left recognizes the church as a final firewall against their control. They understand that in order for the America they want to be born and fully constituted, it has to involve removing the church. Later on in the program, we're going to talk about the invasion that we're going through, how that the purpose of bringing in a population who wants to do us harm from all over the world has everything to do with this same agenda. So this is a test. It's all related. It's a test. And here's what happened. The Super Bowl commercial where we said, Jesus, you know, he gets us. Right. Right. And the implication there is that in, in every one of the scenes of that commercial, and we've shown it, they show a person either in front of abortion clinic or a person in, in some moral dilemma. And uh, the church's reaction is, we're just going to give you a kind of a placid approval for what you're doing instead of preaching the gospel. And one of the lies of this current time is this. And the church is preaching this lie, Todd, that, yep. it's, that it's more important to be spiritual than it is to be biblical. That the choice is, I'm not really biblical, I'm being spiritual. And if you're biblical, you're being hateful. Well, folks, think about that. Anyone that just says that to you is not thinking correctly. Why bother to call yourself a Christian if you don't believe the Bible is the word of God, why do you do that? There's only one possibility. You're camouflaging and trying to do something to Christianity. It isn't that Christianity has done something to you. You are trying to do something to Christianity. But let me tell you about Christianity, folks. It's unchangeable. It's not for sale. It's based on the Bible. And once you question the inerrancy of scripture, you know what you've wiped out? every quote that there is about Jesus. So why would you say, I believe in Jesus if you don't believe in the Bible? Those two terms are inescapably connected. You have no record whatsoever. It's like telling me, okay, I believe Abraham Lincoln existed, but there is no such thing as a Gettysburg Address. Mm -hmm. Those two things are inescapably linked. And it's about the inerrancy of scripture. I'm going to say one more thing. I got to throw it to you. I preach a gospel where hundreds of people get off drugs in an yep. evening, come out of gangs, are healed of sickness. So why would I adopt a modernist message that is powerless, that even the lost doesn't even want? The target audience for this watered down Christian faith is the lukewarm Christian. That's who That's it's right. for for hypocrites right. and those with commitment issues. But the lost, they're never going to hear from me, my friend, a filtered, socially altered, genetically mutated Christian gospel. They're going to hear a Bible-based truth, and that's all there is to it. 
That's right. You know, we wonder why so many folks are being deceived in this hour. And what you're saying, Mario, you know, it really resonated in my spirit when I was thinking about this is because if they're not preaching the Bible, the folks aren't really set up for success. It, it's really a, a different form. It's, it's a form of godliness. It's not, it's not the entirety of what we can walk in as a believer. So what happens is then you're deceived because you don't have the full, the full counsel of God. We have to have the full counsel of God. That faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. Uh, you know, how do we, without faith, you can't please God. So this is what's happened is this, this version of Christianity that you're discussing and that he gets us, there's a large portion of American Christians, okay, that, that uh, subscribe to this and they're not hearing from God. They're not hearing from the Holy Spirit. And so that's why the level of deception is so high. And I know we've, we've talked about this a lot, but, but just think about this because now we're at this defining moment. See, Mario, when you go into cities, I go into cities, folks constantly come to me. I mean, I probably hear this more than anything else. And they say, it's so hard for me to find a church that's speaking about the things that you're talking about. And at first I thought, this is crazy. Like there's God, you know, obviously there are some amazing pastors out there that are speaking these things. And thank you. There are many of you watch this program and we're in agreement, but you know, it's always blown my mind that there's, there's so few that are. And if you are, you know that, you know, that a lot of pastors in your city probably aren't. A lot of Christians aren't talking about these things. And my, my always, my question's always been, why, why are we not? Because this is the Bible and we're seeing the Bible play out. And now it's got to the point where a crusade is being canceled. I mean, this just is so mind blowing to me, Mario, that you have to deal right. with this. And can you just I want you to talk about the cost. OK, we, we talked a little bit about this before the show, but, you know, not to not to give ourselves accolades or pat ourselves on the back. But just can you explain when you are out there doing these things, some of the cost of taking these stands? And can we kind of get into that a little bit? Right. Well, uh, you want to talk about emotionally, for my family, uh, reputation, or financial. It's all tied all, together. It's all part all of the cost. Above. Yeah, You have to budget it all in there. Well, the, the thing that I, uh, I have to tell everyone is the cost is a daily one. It's not weekly. It's not somebody said, well, you're not in a crusade. Are you paying the price then? Equal to at any moment. And the reason is that when you decide to go for truth, you have to understand what Satan is doing in our time and in our day. Yeah. What he's doing is counterfeiting everything that's capable of being counterfeited. And he wants to make a, a victim, a casualty out of every person he can. The Bible says it very clearly. He goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for targets. So when you take a stand, you become a target. That's but right. that, that here's, the, here's the cost. For example, uh, at Salt River Fields, we have spent in excess of $100,000 preparing for this crusade. In the natural, that all went up in smoke. Our TV commercials became irrelevant. Our cards became irrelevant. The amount of work that our workers were doing on the streets who are funded by us to be there, it all went up in smoke. But here's where the Bible comes in. It says that God reaps where he has not sown. Now, God is going to take everything that's happened to us and boomerang it on the devil. And according to Romans 8, 28, it says all things work together for good to them who are called. A believer whose life is entrenched in Christ never suffers actual loss. God makes it up at one point or another. We expect that. And I, what I'm, what I'm praying for is, is for the, the first backfire, uh, to be a, a literal fire. The Christians of Phoenix to wake up and say that we are not going to allow the first stage of cancel culture for an outreach to expand to greater boldness because the enemy is going to be emboldened by this. That's why every preacher needs to speak out. And, and you know what? We not only need to speak out, Todd, against the left that has done this, but against the Christian uh, lukewarm who are also a threat to us at this point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 
I think the last week we had Eric Mentaxis on the show, and he said, if you're in a church that's not preaching the word, not taking a stand, what are you doing there? Get out. Well, that litmus test is being played out in Phoenix, Arizona right now. It's being played out in the sense that if you think what Salt River Fields did to us was not done to you as well, that it won't mean that the enemies of the Christian faith will be emboldened by this to take further steps. The next one might be a concert or a youth convention, or it might be actual church worship on Sunday. And you say, oh, that's not possible. That's going to happen. And yet the warnings that you and I began to give uh, me three years ago, they said it was absurd. The things I said were going to come down. They said, and you and I, we've also showed videos of David Wilkerson talking about what was going to happen in America. And at the time, he was ridiculed. He was put down. He was considered to be an angry, false preacher. And yet, to the T, everything he said, the devil has followed that script step by step, every iota. And that's why we've got to fight. We've got to unify and galvanize around the truth and act on this. That's right. You know, Mario, there's some people that are watching that maybe two years ago got a little bit mad at you and probably mad at me as well. When we said some things publicly, Uh, you really were bold about this. You wrote blogs and went on several different shows and kind of talked about some things. And at the time, it was not, you know, everybody didn't just say, yeah, you know, let's let's listen to Mario. There were people that were friendly. We call it friendly fire in the church that were hitting you, uh, saying all kinds of stuff, hitting me, saying I lost, you know, people that used to support us. I mean, there was like a whole bunch of stuff that happened as a result. Talk about a cost, you know, and and so it's one thing that you're getting hit by the radical left and you're getting hit by, you know, uh, the cancel culture and the woke mob. And then the other side, you're getting hit with some people in the church who can be sometimes just as mean spirited. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm not taking a victory lap right now. I want to make very this very clear because there's really no winner in this. There's really no winner. Uh, but but now, though, they, the, the evil agenda, the woke mob and the demonic agenda and the globalists, they've continued to move forward with their plan. And here we are two years later. Uh, President Trump has not been restored to the White House. I know people said that that was going to happen. Uh, when we said it wasn't going to happen, people were very angry, very, very angry. Uh, people were telling me that I was I was going against what God was saying and all these different things. But Mario, I just, you know, if you want to comment on it, comment on it. If not, you don't need to. But I, I just want to get your opinion. We're not taking a victory lap here, but just, you know, as the two years have now gone by and here we are, what's on your heart? Well, here's what's on my heart. You know, uh, I, I know that there was a lot of stupid stuff being said. And people ask me, why do you think that's not of God? When they talk about Jello Mountains and T-Rexes and Elvis singing to Jesus, who owns the Harley Davidson? And I don't need to go beyond anything. That's stupid. That's all. You don't have to go any further than that. It's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. The people that, that I am concerned about are the voices that say you shouldn't be calling this stuff out. So I'm going to make a statement right here. The only thing person, the, excuse me, the only person as bad as a false prophet is the Christian who doesn't believe in calling out that false prophet. Now, if you don't believe that a false teacher or false prophet should be called out, you are as bad as that teacher because you are giving consent. And you know, the Bible shows us that at the Paul understood that sometimes throwing a rock to stone somebody or standing there watching it and agreeing to it is the same thing as taking mm-hmm. up a rock. And he said, it says in in the book of Acts, it says Paul was standing there. He said, I was giving consent. Now, in Revelations, it tells about Jezebel being in the church and how God would throw her on a sickbed. But he said, I have this against you, that you tolerate her teachings. So think about that, Todd. Think about what that says. That is deliberately what's going on. So the people that I got the most outraged by wasn't the, the, excuse me, I'm not going to call them names, the individuals that were saying preposterous things. Uh, One prophet from Alabama, he said, God lives in a cubicle full of gelatin. 
Uh, we're not going to talk about what that's full of. But here we are going to look at this fact. You as a mediocre, middle of the ground, saying Mario is wrong to cause division. No, I'm not causing division. They are. See, and here's what happened. 90% of our base stayed with me. We didn't lose anything hardly. One reason why I was not deeply embedded in the, in the prophetic community and our ministry grew and they needed to finally know my motivation, Todd, you know, because yeah. why did I call them out? Mainly because they were distracting people, destroying people. They were bringing people away from God and away from soul winning. They were denigrating the Bible. And when you preach a 35-minute sermon that's a prophetic utterance and you never get to the Word of God, look at me. What are you doing in a church where a man prophesies for 40 minutes? I mean, God is not a blabbermouth. That is crazy. That is undone. You know, Paul said even limited the number of prophetic words in 1 Corinthians. He said, look, let him prophesy two or at most by three. We've got this unending thing going on right now. And you know how I feel vindicated? Then I'm going to stop. Uh, I feel vindicated because their foolishness has now become evident to everyone. It's no. evident to everyone Looking at it now, they've revisited what I said, and they said, you know what, Mario? You are absolutely right. It is a clown show, and it has clearly been exposed, and now we move on. And now our, our, our moment has arrived where we're facing persecution, mm. and we don't have time to fight among ourselves. We That's are it. facing persecution. Comment That's on it. that, Todd. Yeah, so you said we don't have time to be arguing among ourselves. Here, here's where we go from here. Can we now, you know, just look forward and say, here's where we're at. We're at this crazy time in our country. Religious liberty is on the line. Uh, you know, they're, they're trying to bring us into a one world global government. We see everything that's being orchestrated. But, you know, can we push back? Yes. Yes, we can, because the Bible says we have the authority in the name of Jesus to pull down strongholds. The Bible says occupy until he comes. The Bible says he's with us until the end of the age. So we as the church have many, many tools at our disposal, but we've got to, we've got to recognize the biggest thing that the devil did in the world was try to convince the world that he doesn't exist. And it's the same thing when, when, when people are talking about a bunch of stuff that is irrelevant, you know, jello and this and that, and, and the enemy keeps pushing forward. And so we, as the body of Christ, got to say, okay, stop with the infighting. Stop with all the, let's, can we talk about the real issue at hand? Can we talk about how we're not, get, we're not preaching biblical Christianity in a good portion of the church? How do I know that? We just sat down with uh, George Barna. He read some staggering That's statistics. Right. Staggering statistics. I think it was one in eight, Mario, of, of preachers aren't really preaching from a biblical perspective, from a biblical worldview. That is so unbelievable to me. So I think there's, there's what we can do is we can course correct we can recognize this moment in time and we can start to do what's right from here. If my people, if we humble ourselves, why does God say humble? Think about that second Chronicles 7, 14. The first thing he says is if my people humble themselves. When people are doubling down on false, doubling down, doubling down, doubling down, just keep going with it. That's, that's not humbling themselves. When, when we finally say, hey, look, I may have made a mistake here but I love the Lord more than I love my reputation. So I'm willing to put that and say, you know what? Here's the deal. We need to move forward. This is what the Bible says. Humble ourselves. I think people are pretty forgiving. I think people actually recognize that's leadership. Like, you know, every human being is going to make a mistake once in a while. But the deal is, why does he say, if my people humble themselves first, then what does he say? He says, pray. If my people pray, he wants a praying people. How many people are not praying? A good portion of the body of Christ isn't praying. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek my face. He wants us to seek his face. Now, this is the last point I'm going to make on this, Mario, but seek his face means to spend time in the prayer closet. And when you spend time in the prayer closet, you have a revelation. I, I'm all for it. Like people are watching this show. They can hear our commentary and some of the things that we're saying. That's, that's good. I mean, we need to have these conversations. But I would say, you would say, I think David Wilkerson would say, the first thing everybody should do is go to the Lord. God, what do you want me to do? God, what do I need to know? We've got to have that time in the, in the prayer closet. We've got to have that time seeking the face of the Lord. And that's why the Lord said that is one of the, the, the requirements of the restoration of our nation. So it's humble ourselves, pray, seek his face. We've got to hear from the Lord. 
You know, in James chapter one, verse five through eight, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, so let's stipulate right now that you watching disagree with the idea of pushing back. But if you ask God about it, if you borrowed that idea from another preacher, a wispy, greasy individual, instead of deciding on your own through prayer that God wants you to speak out, then you're already in danger. So it says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and abrades not. But it says, don't let that man ask in doubt for then you're as unstable as a, as a ship in the sea. Now watch, in your prayer time that Todd just mentioned, you will discern the times. Now it's interesting that we need to know the will of God. In Ephesians chapter five, it says these words, do not be ignorant, but know the, be wise knowing the will of God. So knowing what God wants us to do is life and death. And let me tell you, I'm gonna tell you where we're at now. I believe that the, that the dialogue of my ministry and those who are also listening is gonna shift away from trying to correct alone the imbalances of the church. I believe something desperate has happened. It is found in Revelation. Satan has come down to you in great wrath. Now, the left has literally lost its mind. It is now unapologetically mad. We're about to show you a video that demonstrates it. And and you'll see our commentary on it. It has to do with the murder of Lake and Riley. And I want you to listen carefully to how far gone the left is right now. So let's run that video right now. It's been a, certainly a big week for President Biden. He had the State of the Union on Thursday. Uh, one of the infamous moments, of course, is when he referred to the man who's now been charged with the murder of Lake and Riley as an illegal. He was immediately uh, caught with some criticism from his own party. The NBC article came out saying that it was disappointing that he referred to him as, as illegal. And but as he tends to do, uh, Biden immediately kind of caved to the Democratic Party, and he has recently, as of today, he's now apologized for using the term illegal. Take a listen. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. I'm not going to treat any, any, any of these people with disrespect. So you, you regret using that word? Yes. You know, Guy, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Democrats really seem to have a hard time calling people who do illegal activity illegal. Why is that? Well, I think that this president is in the grip of a hardcore constituency on his far left. He lives in fear of them. He is paral uh, paralyzed by them. Many people in the media fall into that camp, sort of the left wing of the Democratic Party base. It's many journalists. And I just want to review the man who allegedly killed Lake and Riley entered this country illegally. He then committed and was arrested for multiple illegal acts in two different states, culminating in a murder in which he brutalized and bludgeoned her skull with such force that she was disfigured. If you have not earned the word illegal at that point, what is the point of that word even existing? Now, let me, let me tell you what I, I want you to comment on. What do you think is the most devastating thing that you just heard? Out of all that dialogue, it's a simple phrase that Biden used. He said, it's, I'm not gonna call him illegal. Not just anybody, he's talking about that murderer. I'm not gonna call him illegal. And then he said this, I'm not going to disrespect anyone. That term, anyone, that pronoun does not work unless it includes that murder. Your alleged president just said, I'm not going to disrespect a man that just murdered a woman, beat her senseless so she's unrecognizable. And, and he can be a murderer. He can have accomplished all of this, but I'm not going to disrespect him. Now, 
It's no longer a policy, ladies and gentlemen. This is insanity. Comment, Todd. Yes, it is insanity. And here's the thing. Anybody that would have an issue with that, if it was their family, they wouldn't have an issue. They, they would understand immediately why everybody's so outraged because it immediately becomes very real. It's easy when it's a number or it's somebody that you don't know. But when that's a family member that you, I've talked to people, Mario, I've been at the border. OK, uh, we've talked to people over the years. I've heard the firsthand stories. You know, go talk to somebody who lives right by the border that has a ranch. And they'll tell you that they live in fear of the cartels. They'll tell you the trafficking that's going on. I mean, it is so unbelievable. But this stuff is not being reported. When, when there's a death like that, you know, go speak to a family. As a pastor, you know, unfortunately, I, 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 I hear this a lot. And, you know, I, I, I talk to families and it just breaks my heart. But here's the problem with the, with the modern left. And I, I think every Christian has to understand where we're at. Who is the lawless one? It's the devil. What, 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 when you see lawlessness, what does that mean? That means demons and the devil are, are in control of that because God is a God of order. God has law. It's, it's perfect law. It's his word, truth, righteousness sets up. So when a country operates in the moral compass of the Bible, the country w runs well. The country is blessed. God's favor is on the nation. When, that, when the moral compass and morality in the Bible are taken out, what do you have left? You have lawlessness. And that is where this... This so-called president, you know, when he can speak, is is so confused because he doesn't know how to answer his constituents because they have no there's no compass. It's anything goes. And when it's anything goes, it's lawlessness. And that's what the, the Democrat Party has a real problem because they've now taken a position of complete lawlessness and anarchy. And so, uh, you know, anybody that has a business or lives by the border or has any part of their life, I'm, I'm hearing, Mario, New York citizens that have been lifelong Democrats that are saying, I'm not going to vote for Biden because I can't walk down the street and feel safe with my daughter anymore. You know what I'm saying? Well, now here, here is what I really want everyone to, uh, and thank you for that, Todd. That was really good. Uh, here's what I want everyone to consider. You are Lakin Riley's parents. You turn on the television and you're watching more regard for the reputation of the person who murdered your daughter than you are for your daughter because they're concerned that he not be called illegal. And, and it's absolutely insane because there's only one motivation behind it. They know that they're trying to expand their voter base in order to stay in power. There is nothing humanitarian about this. There is nothing uh, compassionate about it. It is blatant power grab. And that's why, as you said, people are waking up. But the same thing applies to the situation with Israel and Hamas. And, and you look at it and you go, well, they're committing genocide and totally whitewash the events of October the 6th, which demonstrated so clearly a barbarism that is is unparalleled in the modern era. And I don't even need to go into what they've done because it's, it's just too sickening. But the thing that I feel is important is that God wants to raise up an army. Let's look at the other side of this. We are watching right now uh, a political campaign. People are once again giving us the tired excuse. Now watch. You know, uh, Todd, we had a special guest scheduled for tonight. We had we were going to uh, have a special guest tonight, but we overruled it because of the ban in Arizona. And we both became very, very concerned that God wanted us to speak out about what is going on. What is the point of firepower if we're not going to address what is actually going on. And before this show is over, we're going to arm you. We're not here. That's our motto. We're not here to alarm you. We're here to arm you because there is a secret work of God going on underneath all of this. But I want to finish with this point. Americans are waiting on the true Christians to show themselves. Millions and millions of Americans are waiting for the true Christians to stand up. The ones that aren't cheating on their wives, the ones that aren't committing immorality, the ones that aren't standing up and calling parts of the Bible a lie, the ones that are capitulating 
in some strange way about the LGBTQ agenda. Now, I'm not talking about on fire Christians are waiting for the real Christians. I'm not talking about legitimately saved individuals. I'm talking about the general public is waiting for the real Christians to rise up. That's why I'm telling you this crusade is going to happen. April 21st through the 24th, our tent will be in Phoenix. We will have a crusade, and I believe it's going to be the greatest crusade we've ever had. How do I know that? I've never seen the devil so blatantly fight us to have a crusade. And that proves to me we're going to see miracles. We're going to see masses of people saved. And you as well, Todd, are, are taking a step of faith. Now, let me, let me talk about that step of faith because I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We're about to double our annual budget, double it overnight. Why? Because we got the money? No. Because uh, it's going to make us well known? No. Because the harvest is great and the labors are few. So God has said to me, double the size of your ministry's outreach. Here, in the time of inflation, in the time of retribution on Christian ministries, is the perfect time to expand. It's the perfect time to speak out. We've got to ignore what we see with our eyes and believe that the millions and millions of Americans that are out there that want a living gospel, a biblical gospel, we, we've got to appeal to them, and they're going to come in in record numbers. And that's why you, Todd, are going through a transition yourself on your Friday night meetings. You're about to more. You're not even doubling the size. You're tripling the size. Tripling so size, tell, yeah. tell us what's going on, man. Well, it's the Lord said to walk on the water, you know, look at Jesus in the eye. And to your point, um, you know, I'm just going to be transparent. We're, we're taking a big leap of faith here. Uh, the, the income has not changed much, but we're, we're doubling, maybe even tripling the amount that we're spending as well. And the reason why we're doing this, Mario, look, look at the world. Look at the situation that we're in. Uh, I hear the stories of folks all around the country. They say, I, I want to experience a, a move of God. I want to feel his presence. Uh, you know, we believe in having altar service where we can lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. And you and I have talked about this, this, this Friday night meeting that we're having here in Nashville. It's, it's not only for the folks in Nashville, but it's a destination. I believe folks are going to come and visit us uh, each week. In fact, we've seen that in the last couple of weeks, and it just kept more and more people kept coming. So we had to get a space where we can fit up to 500 people, and um, we believe God is going to fill that space. But it's not about the numbers. What it is is we want to get out of the way every week. We want to come, we want to present the word of God, and then we want to allow for the demonstration. That's what you do at your tent crusades, Mario. And I've watched what you've done over the years, and thank you for being obedient in that. So we're going to do the same thing here in the, in the meetings. We're going to allow the Lord to move. We're going to get out of the way. We're going to expect miracles. And I and the Lord has already been doing miracles, and I, I'm, I'm expecting. So uh, this Friday night's our grand opening uh, in the new location in Hendersonville. You can go to pastortodd.org and find out more information, and we have the information on the website. Uh, but let me just say this, Mario. It, it's a time to take a risk, I believe. And, and here's the thing. We, we see what's going on in the world, and all I know is whatever happens, whatever happens in 24, whatever happens going forward, when I stand before the Lord, I'm going to have a peace knowing that I did everything that I could. You're going to have a peace knowing that you did every. We showed up, and whatever happens, that's up to God. But the deal is, is that we showed up and we said, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything that I possibly can so that when I stand before the Lord, I have peace. And by the way, I sleep at night. I sleep at night because I know God is with us. We feel his presence. We feel his glory. And we are gonna, we're going to be fired up until the Lord returns. You know, I, I want to just uh, show a second video. And I want to mention this about Donald Trump. I know a lot of people still don't like him. Uh, and I'm not going to be a cheerleader for Donald Trump. But I think it's wrong that Facebook blocks a video just because Donald Trump is on it. That ought to tell you everything, folks. See, because I really don't want him to block a video by Joe Biden, because I believe the future of America is dependent on you listening to Joe Biden, because you got to see how really, really inept and completely unqualified he is. And the only way to do that is for you to listen to some of the things he said. Now, we're about to play a video where Donald Trump is going to react to 
Lakin Riley's murder. And we're going to talk about it. And I'll tell you in a moment why. But let's roll that tape right now. Moments ago, I don't know if you heard because you've all been waiting on line for two days. But just moments ago, this was just before coming up. They just told me prior to what I'm doing right now that Joe Biden went on television and apologized for calling Lakin's murderer an illegal. He didn't want to call him illegal. He apologized. He said he should have called him an undocumented, not an illegal. And he wanted to apologize. He wanted to apologize. And, well, they have a new name, too. They have a new name that's even worse. They have a new name. You know what the new name is? Neighbor. They want to call him Neighbor. They want to call him another name. Did you ever hear the other one? Newcomer. A newcomer to our country. Are we, are we going crazy or what? Is this country going crazy? How about that one? Newcomer. The newcomer. Now he was illegal. And I say he was an illegal alien. He was an illegal immigrant. He was an illegal migrant. And he shouldn't have been in our country and he never would have been under the Trump policy. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to comment on the word policy because he said he wouldn't have been here. This wouldn't have happened under Trump's policy. We remember what gas prices were. We remember what the interest rate was. We remember what the economy was like. Now, you got to Todd, here's a word for you. Ideologue. Wow. Ideologue. And and the current uh application of the word ideologue is this. When you believe in something even though it doesn't work because it no longer becomes about whether it does good, whether it is effective, or whether it even makes sense. It's just what I happen to personally have as an ideal. And, and that's like whether you talk about the current wokeness, it is destroyed everything it touches. And I understand. I'm not even going to speak in defense of Trump right now. I'm just simply going to say that if you look at things rationally, if you look at things rationally, we have to stop the current policy. We have to. Let's leave it right there. Let's not take it any further than that. We have to stop the train wreck that's going on right now. Then you will begin to understand why so many people are rushing to the side of Trump. Even uh, immediately, 10% of those who voted for Joe Biden have already publicly stated they're going to vote for Trump. Now, we have an issue of uh, campaign integrity, voter integrity. and that. But right now, what's right in front of you as a believer is this. This madness has got to stop. And God wants to use you. Now, Todd, you went through something when you decided to take over a building that was three times the size of the one you're in now. And you, you're, and it wasn't that you had a windfall of finances, but you had to trust God. And the devil tried to put fear on you. And I think our, our, our firepower perspective right now, the devil tried to put fear on me. I'd never had a month out, a massive crusade canceled before. Never right. had that. What did you do in your moment of fear? Fear is never from the Lord, so we got to identify it. You know, it's easier said than done, though. Okay, so when you're in it, uh, it's a very heavy, uh, you know, you got to really battle this. And so, honestly, uh, I spent up time at night, Mario, um, you know, in my prayer room. And I had to get with the Lord and really get on my face and understand what was going on because, you know, the fear tries to come on you. And when that tries to come on you, you think, am I making a bad decision? You know, as a pastor, as a leader, as a head of a ministry, you never want to be making. as a father, you know, you don't want to be making a bad move where you're going to put other people because it's not just my life. It's a, it's a bunch of other people's lives that it affects. And I know what, you know what I'm talking about, Mario. And so it's like when we make one of these decisions, there's thousands of people uh, that are affected by these different decisions. And so you want to, your heart is to make the right decision when the Lord speaks and then you move 
and then the devil tries to come in with the fear, that's where you got this battle. So in, in the short, it's about getting on your face before the Lord. I'm not just saying it to say it. I'm saying it because this is how you get out of this and you get the mind of Christ. You know, here, here's what I'm going to say. Right now in our world, there's so many egregious things that are happening and we can look at them and be overwhelmed. That's what the devil wants. He wants us to feel overwhelmed. He wants us to feel fear. There's so many believers, strong believers, good believers that have hooked into this fear. And here's what we're going to have to understand is while these things are going on and while the devil has all these wicked plans, the World Economic Forum, Noah Harari and, uh, you know, Klaus Schwab and all these different things, God is still moving. God still has a plan and God's plan is good. And so we as the body, we've got to get in alignment with God's plan. When we get in alignment with God's plan, the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon us. The favor of God is on us and something changes and shifts. And that's what God is wanting. So we can't be on the doom and gloom train. We're watchmen. We know it's happening. But here's what we know is that we belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're on the winning team. There, there could be no better trajectory than where we're headed. And so you get the mind of Christ and the anointing comes and then you walk on the water. There you go. Let me tell you a real uh, truth right here as well to build on what you're saying. If you want to know what's really, really going on, it isn't that they're trying to fight the term illegal. It's that they're trying to remove a definition of immorality. This is what you see. It's not immoral for them to be here against our law. It's not immoral for them to have entered the nation without permission and basically invaded us. So that applies to sexuality. Look at the number of sexual acts that they now want to reclassify as no longer being immoral, including pedophilia. So the issue becomes that we are not fighting a political viewpoint, but an immoral viewpoint. They accuse us and they'll say, you know what? You're just trying to legislate morality. No, that's not it at all. We are trying to stop you from legislating immorality. And that is a biblical scriptural point of view. So how do you in the firepower perspective do the right thing in this? How did I know what was right when I was banned in, in Phoenix? Because I know right from wrong. And when you know you are in the right, right before God, right in your viewpoint, you are right to believe in the Bible. You're right to believe in marriage being between a man and a woman. You're right to believe that parents are to decide their children's welfare and not a government system. That's not a policy. That's morality. It's moral and it's right. And America used to be based more on morals than almost anywhere else. And to the degree that we left the moral, we also left the safety and the, the truth and the naturalness in every stage that we went away from being right. And here's what Abraham Lincoln said in his second inaugural speech, right makes fight. What you want to do to get rid of fear is to realize that you are not representing yourself. You're representing truth. You're standing in the name of God for what you are preaching, saying, and believing. And that's why the devil worked so hard to remove Christians from the Bible so they wouldn't be near those Bible verses that would have clarified what is right and what is wrong. What do you, you know, what do we want our children to know above all else? What is right and what is wrong? And when you're in the right, Todd, then you know the money's going to be there. When you're in the right, you know that you're going to succeed. You know that God is going to vindicate you. And that, my friend, is what we want everyone that's here that's watching now to understand. The bottom line is you're going to see a breakthrough in Phoenix. You're going to see it. Because you know what? We're right, they're wrong, and God's word is going to prevail over everything else. That's right. 
That's right. This is going to be a testimony, and we're going to see the Lord move. And I believe there's going to be powerful miracles, Mario, that happen. Uh, I believe some some folks that are watching this broadcast are going to make their way there and receive a miracle from the Lord and, and, and be in the presence of God. And this is what's available. Uh, you know, the dead church has got to go in America. we got to get back on fire for God. we got to believe what his word says. And I believe it wholeheartedly. I know you do, Mario. And I know you do that are watching this broadcast. You believe wholeheartedly in the Lord. You wouldn't spend the time with us an hour tonight unless you believed in God. And so we want to we want to encourage you tonight that we're going to continue this fight. I know Mario, listen, I know Mario personally. This man is going to continue this. You're going to, you're going to yep. see a win in this. This is going to be because the hand of God is all over this. And even though it looks right now, look, it's David versus Goliath, but the deal is at the end, we're going to see a victory, Mario, right? Yes, we are. And, you know, we got about three minutes left, maybe less. But we want to use these last three minutes very wisely, Todd. So I think that the, the final statements that tie all of this together today is this. Number one, you must not feel like a victim living in the current world. God did not punish you by putting you into 2024. He honored you because you get to see the glory of God demonstrated on a level that's never been demonstrated before. Number two, for you to get rid of your fear, get rid of your insecurity, and get rid of the anxiety of this hour, you begin by separating yourself and then digging into God to know his voice. If you were to boil down every single video that we've shown you of David Wilkerson, he the thread that runs through all of them, that sews it all together, is this statement, you have got to know the voice of God for yourself and not through anyone else. And when you do, you'll become unshakable. And I believe that that's what this program was for. I believe that God raised up firepower to cut through all the noise and present to the body of Christ a gospel that is supernatural, a biblical perspective on what's going on that doesn't end up overly political or overly cowardly, but right in that center of truth. And I believe that's what's happening now. Don't you believe that, Todd? 100%. God is raising up folks that are walking in the transformed mind, not the conformed mind, not the hive mind. You notice what the left is trying to do is the hive mind. It's like the Borg and, you know, Star Trek. No, this is the transformed group right here that are going to understand and discern the times, spend time in our prayer closet, and then go and make disciples and be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's who you are. And this is a Gideon's 300 group right here. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing so strong right now, Mario. This this word needed to be spoke tonight. Yep. Let's just have a closing prayer for all the people right now. My God and my Father, I thank you for what you are doing for everyone who's watching. Every discouraged pastor who's under persecution can feel the glory. You said that a spirit of glory would abide on us when we are attacked. Let it be, Lord. Father, if anyone is confused about their moral stands, give them clarity and give them the peace that by taking the right stand and having the right heart, that they're going to be strong in Jesus' name. And Father, finally, heal bodies, save souls, and let America be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's it for tonight, folks. And Todd and I wanna thank you for watching. And we're going to be with you next Wednesday with big news, big news. Get ready. God bless you.